Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I'm Carol Howell, your host, and thank you for joining me. I'm calling today's episode Neuro This and Epi That. Yeah, what in the world is she talking about? You've wondered that so many times about me that you're probably used to it. Well, I have been talking to you for some time about things that we can do to reduce our chances of getting Alzheimer's. No guarantees in life, are there? Mm -mm. No, death and taxes, isn't that what they say? (laughs) So there's no guarantee we won't get any disease. But the truth is there are things that we can do that will drastically reduce our chances of getting a lot of really nasty diseases. And the good news for you and I both is that those things that we need to do to reduce our chances of cancer are the same as reducing our chances of Alzheimer's, of reducing our chances of diabetes, the same as Alzheimer's, of reducing our chances of heart disease, the same as for Alzheimer's. Now that's good news because there are several steps. There are a lot of lifestyle changes that you might need to make and that I need to make and am working on it. And I can tell you some of these lifestyle changes I've been actively involved in for goodness, 10 years or more and realizing in the last uh, two months that there's still a lot of room for improvement. And so I'm making those changes. But what I have been telling you are things that we can do, but I want to talk to you about a little bit about how the brain works in that we know, as I have told you, that inflammation is just a a precursor for so many issues in our body. Inflammation is not your friend except for the fact that it can often point out that there is a problem in that specific part of the body because the bar- that part of the body is inflamed. But your brain is inflamed if you have many situations such as irritable bowel syndrome, your, your gut, your gut microbiome is off. And pretty much if you're breathing, I think there's a pretty good chance your gut microbiome is not what it's supposed to be because in our culture. We don't eat like we should. Um, We put all kinds of preservatives and artificial this and that's and chemicals um, from our food and from the, the products that we use and that's throwing your gut biome off. I learned this past week, I don't think I've told you guys this, I have to go back and re- listen to it or watch an old episode, that if you were born cesarean, um, it reduces your chances of a healthy microbiome right from the get-go, that the act of actually coming through the birth canal and the nose and the mouth of, the, of that brand new baby being flooded with the uh, mucosa and everything coming from the mother That is full of her microbiome, and it's good for the baby, and it helps build that baby up. But when you are born C-section, you miss that. And then also um, being breastfed increases the chances of a healthy microbiome. And also having spent your life not eating all the junk, which is pretty much going to leave most Americans out. You know, they call the American diet the SAD diet. It stands for Standard American Diet, but it is sad when you think about it. Well, it's not standard around my house. So we know that diet can change your chances of Alzheimer's by 50%. Now, honey, that is huge. That is huge. Think about reducing your chances of Alzheimer's simply by changing what you eat, and that's what I'm telling you you can do. You can reduce your chances of, of Alzheimer's by exercising 51 minutes a week by 48%. Well, I know it's 151 minutes a week. What is it? I can't remember. Anyway, you need to, you need to be moving your you-know-what every day. Um, so we have the ability to fight disease, and our brains, believe it or not, our brain can do this also. Our brain can constantly be changing right up until the minute, literally the minute that we take our very last breath. Now, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. I just got through not even an hour ago. We were talking about um, our move to Florida and how what we miss about our previous life. And I said, I miss my friend Charlotte, but I talk to her four or five times a week. She's coming to see me in a few days. And I miss my mama, but I can't do anything about my mama. But the thing that I think about is her last half hour of her life. And it was a very sad thing. But right up through that process, her brain 
even though it was extremely diseased, was still going through this process called neuroplasticity, epigenics, and neurogenesis. I sound so important when I say that, but the fact is I got to read this to you because this is all stuff that I am learning. I understand dementia quite a lot better than I understand the working of the brain. <laughs> so we have this ability to change the expression of our genes through a process called epigenetics. Genetics. Now, you got the genes you got, and I'm not talking your Levi's here, <laughs> or the ones that you have to hold your breath to zip up. I'm not talking about those kinds of genes. I'm talking about those the DNA that, that, you, that makes you you. You have what you have, but you can change the expression of those genes. You can turn on and turn off some of those genes, and that process is called epigenetics. In your brain, you have neurons, and they go through a process called neurogenesis, or the, the rebuilding or making of neurons. And then there's this process called neuroplasticity, plasticity, neuroplasticity, as in plastic or pliable, and that's where our brains are rewired. We rewire our brains through a process called neuroplasticity. Now, all of those are important in good brain health. How do we cause those things to be activated in our brain? Keeping inflammation down, eating right, exercising, mm -hmm. eating with people, trying not to eat alone if you can help it. Now, I know some of you live in environments where it's you and your LO, and you can't eat while you're taking care of your LO because you're too busy feeding them. But maybe if they could just sit with you while you eat, if that is something that they can still do. And I realize they might not can. But if you can, and if they're still able to talk at all with you so that you have interaction with someone while you eat, it helps with digestion. Anything that helps with digestion is good for your belly. Anything that's good for your belly is good for your heart, good for your brain. Those kinds of things are important. Attending a house of worship whatever your, fight, your faith might be, attending a house of worship and being around those who are like you in your faith and expressing that faith absolutely increases longevity. All of these things are good for our body and they help to build us up so that that brain can participate in neuroplasticity and epigenetics and what was our other one? Neurogenesis. We want that. So that's one of the reasons that we have got to think about lifestyle. That's just one of the reasons. I'm going to tell you, good sleep is uh, it's just massively important in your life. You can do all the right things and have problems sleeping, and you almost negate doing those right things. Um, that has become very real in my life. In the last mm, couple of made me last month. I, I go to sleep very well, but I'll wake up four or five times a night, get up and go to the bathroom. That's what menopause will do to you. You know, what can I say? And then when I come back, I've got to go back to sleep. Well, I also drink this entire 32 ounce Yeti, fake Yeti, cup full of uh, water. I must sleep with my mouth open. I don't know, guys. Maybe I do. And it dries my mouth out. And I wake up and I'm thirsty. Oh, my word. So I suck down a whole lot of water. Now, you know what that does. It makes me have to get up again a little bit, go to the bathroom, right? Then I come back and I'm thirsty and I drink some more water. Do you see the cycle? How it just, it doesn't end. So I have <laughs> employed the practices that you did with your children where you said you may have a drink of water before you go to bed, but you get nothing afterwards. Well, I do still take my water to bed, but I literally just get the smallest sip to wet the inside of my mouth and I try to go back to sleep. That has helped some. But I have recently purchased some new doTERRA oils. And again, I don't sell doTERRA. I just, I just very much believe in the efficacy of these oils and how important they are for your body. My class that I've recently gone through talked about essential oils, but one of the oils that's recommended is Breathe. Now, Breathe is that oil that I told you that you put on the upper lip, lip and on the rise of the chest above the heart, and it helps stop the runny nose in folks with dementia. Well, Breathe also helps you sleep. And I thought, man, I've got this stuff in the cabinet. Let me go try it. 
So last night, for the first time, I put one drop that I put across my upper lip, one drop on the rise of the breast above the heart, and then I mixed it with a carrier oil, which in my case was fractionated coconut oil, put a little fractionated coconut oil in my hand, and one drop of breathe, stirred it up, and rubbed it on the bottom of my feet. On the bottom of your feet, you have 2,000 receptors that bring stuff into your body. Now, you know this happens. You know about transdermal patches. You know, there's um, it's Exelon, I believe, is the, the patch they get folks for dementia folks with dementia. I don't know how effective it is, but it's a patch. And pain patches, there are the patches to help you quit smoking. There's all kinds of patches. Transdermal goes through the skin into the system. Well, a, a product that's applied to the bottom of the feet will get into your system quicker than any other way. So I put it there and did the, the other spots I mentioned. I want you to know, I slept from midnight. Well, I slept from nine o'clock to midnight and had to tinkle. And from midnight to six o'clock, that's six hours of uninterrupted sleep. I have not had that in just forever. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes of where you can order do the doTERRA oils if you want to. That particular one is called Breathe. I'm going to keep you posted about how um, these oils are working for me, as I've told you, as part of the process of healing my gut microbiome. I am using some oils on my feet, and I'm also taking one drop a day of another one. Um, from doTERRA to see can I heal my heal my belly I'm wanting to get off of my ulcer medicine and I will keep you posted but for your benefit I will give you the link that you can um, contact Beth and she can tell you about these oils and order them for you should you like to do so it's worth a try we got to do what we can do we got to think outside of the box and take care of this body look at my new necklace see this I bought this yesterday at a craft show. It looks kind of neat, doesn't it? There's a little ball in it. See the little blue ball? Well, you open this up, it springs open, and you put one drop of oil on that ball, and it's around your neck, and you can smell it. And it's, that is healing for your body. And the oil that I put on this is doTERRA's um, On Guard, and it helps... Uh, uh, it's like works to build your immune system. That's it. To help you uh, be able to fight off those things that are causing issues for you, like uh, cold season and flu season. And for those of you who are listening to this show rather than seeing it, is it just a little wire cage with that ball inside that you can drop the oil on? Pretty neat, huh? I thought it was. I liked it. Well, I hope that gives you some encouragement to keep trusting me in that you've got to make these changes in your body. You've just got to, folks. It's not an option any longer. We don't want to be dealing with cancer and, and diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's. <sighs> no, sir, we do not. So those are some things that I want you to think about. Well, thank you for joining me. I will see you tomorrow and we'll talk some more about Let's Talk Dementia. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth. You can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the, hunt, the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.